as you are preparing for your P1 AS math, remember that you are going to be tested on question to do with indices and sets, and that is exactly what we are going to go through in this particular video. If you are new to Proflan YouTube channel, consider subscribing so that in time I'm going to upload another tutorial, you'll be notified. And also check this PDF in the description. Go and join my Patreon page so that you can be in a position of downloading the PDF and the marking scheme for free. We're going to go straight to the first question and the first question here we are given that we are supposed to f express a raised to power a half 16 over b cubed into simplest form and then find um, in the form k equals to x raised to power n but before us looking into those indices question we are going to first look at what are the laws of indices what are the laws of indices if two terms which are having the same base are multiplied then it means we're going to add the powers but if two terms having the same base are divided we're going to subtract the powers also if you are having um uh, this m raised to power a over b it means the b root m raised to power a we also have uh, a scenario by where by we have a negative as the power it means you're going to find the reciprocal of m and then raised to power a over b then you treat it as the sec the third point that we had mentioned here we have identified those as the laws of indices now let's uh, let us look at how to express a raised power half a raised to power half is the same as the square root of a and uh, having that uh, having understood that when a variable is raised to a half it means square root then we can be able to substitute what a was and then we can see we're gonna have this as our final answer for b we are supposed to express 16 over b cubed in the form k x raised to power n where k are, n are simplified constants so we can be able to say this is 16 divided by b power 3 and uh, b is 16 over root x so meaning that we can be able to divide and uh, substitute in that way Changing a division to a multiplication, we're going to find the reciprocal of what's inside the bracket, of course, and this is going to reduce to what? It's going to be 1 over 256, x raised to power 2, as the final answer in that case. Uh, we also have part C, whereby we have AB over 2 raised to power negative 4 over 3. So in this case, I'll start by finding what a, b is. I multiply a and b, I get the answer, then I divide by 2. Then there, once I've gotten the answer, that's when now I start working out with the powers. So we shall start with what a, b is. We can be able to substitute what we were given, and that is going to translate to what? Uh, 16 and 64 can divide. And that becomes 4 but x squared divided by x raised to pi a half becomes we subtract actually the powers so that becomes 3 over 2 and then now we can divide by 2 and to divide by 2 here we it's like we can multiply this by a half which is going to reduce to x 3 over 2 x raised to power 3 over 2 over 8 which will mean that now we can go back to the original equation the way it was. We are having that, so I can be able to raise this to negative 4 over 3, uh, which will mean that we shall have this as uh, 
So what I've done, remember there is a negative of the power, then that one will make will, will make what is inside the bracket a reciprocal. And then I can be able to find the cube root of all the terms. Okay, I've uh, decided here because every term is raised to power 4 over 3. So if I multiply 8 raised to power 4 over 3 and the denominator by 4 over 3, this is going to reduce to 16 over x raised to power 2. And then if I take x up, it becomes 16 x raised to power negative 2. as the final answer. So this is to do with indices. Uh, next, I need to take you to question to do with SADs. And um, under SADs, you are going to learn also how to rationalize the denominator. Uh, that is one of the area that we're going to look at. And remember when you're having an expression like that, and you're supposed to leave it in the form A root three plus B root five, where A and B are constants to be found. Remember, this is um, a situation whereby you need to rationalize the denominator. And to do that, you are going to multiply the numerator and the denominator by the conjugate of the denominator. Now, since we are having 2 root 3 plus root 5 in the denominator, it means that we can now be able to, we can change the sign of that, so that becomes the conjugate. That multiplied, of course, uh, we can now open the brackets. We need to open the brackets to ensure that uh, we have a simplified form. There are terms which are going to combine, and then we shall have the denominator being a, a rational number because we are going to have the denominator as 12 minus 5. Now, putting the like terms together, we are going to have that then. I remain with 7, then 7 can divide 21 and 7 can divide 14, which will mean that uh, we shall have our answer as 3 root 3 minus 2 root 5. Now, hence or otherwise solve. Now, you see in these questions whereby you are hence or otherwise, hence or otherwise, it means whatever answer you've gotten from the previous section, uh, you are going to use it in part B. I want you to be very keen on that. Uh, if you find that questions are saying hence, you have done part A and then you are told hence or otherwise, you can work it from scratch in part B from scratch, or uh, you can be able to use what you have gotten in part A in order to work out what's in part B. Uh, let, just, just a moment so that I can be able to show you exactly what, how this is going to work in this question. We are going to take those terms with x on one side in this part here uh, so that we can be able to factor x and uh, express or make x the subject of the formula. So since we were having this, I'm going to take negative 2x root 3 into the other side and I'll take uh, 5 root 15 on the other side of the equal sign to the right so that we can be able to make x the subject of the formula in this case you can see now this is what we have i'm going to factor x out here and i'll have 2 root 3 plus root 5 then i will divide by 2 root 3 plus root 5 both sides so that we can be able to remain with x on one side and that's exactly what we're gonna have so you see what i've just done i've um, made x the subject of the formula and on the right hand side i've factored 5 out so if i factor 5 out you see in the numerator we're going to remain with um, we're going to remain with 8 minus root 15 over 2 root 3 plus root 5 and in fact if you see this part that we are having here is exactly what we had begun with in the previous section 
So, and we have rationalized that we know that is equivalent to this part. So, it means this section of uh, 8 minus root 5 over 2 root 3 plus root, rather I mean 8 minus root 15 over 2 root 3 plus root 5 can be replaced with 3 root 3 minus 2 root 5. So we are going to say this is going to be equal to 5 into bracket 3 root 3 minus 2 root 5. And if you open the bracket, this is got what you are going to get. What is? Which is 15 root 3 minus 10 root 5. Now, we also have uh, the third question here. And the third question, we are told that... Uh, in this question, you must show all your stages of your working and then you write y equals to 5x squared plus root x cubed over root 3 cube root over 8x in the form y equals to a xp plus b x raised to power q and then where a b p and q are constants to be found so in this case we shall start by expressing the terms each of the terms that we have of 8x we can be able to express it uh, in such a way that we can be able to divide each of our the terms in the numerator by root or cube root of 8x. We can be able to divide each of the term of the denominator. We can be able to divide each of the term of the numerator by the cube root of 8x. So meaning that um, we shall um, start by writing. Let's write y equals to. Yeah, so we can be able to take the first term and divide by the cube root of 8x plus the second term divided by the cube root of 8x. Now let us um, express each of the term in power form. We shall be able to express each of the term in power form. Our cube root of 8 is 2. Then we can be able to express that as power 1 over 3. This one can be expressed as... Uh, x raised to power 3 over 2 yeah and this is going to be 2x raised to a third then we can now simplify that into this format which will mean that our expression will look like this now we can be able to relate huh? the first term is uh, 5 over 2 which is going to be our a uh-huh our p is going to be 5 over 3. Our b is going to be a half. And our q is going to be 7 over 6. Hence, find dy dx, giving each coefficient in simple form. So what you realize at this point is that uh, most of the time, questions will not be asked in in a level they will be tend to be testing different topics they'll tend to touch different concepts so this is a question to do with the differentiation and something that uh, we need to remind ourselves is that when we are doing differentiation when you have y equals to x raised to power n to define to differentiate this dy dx dy dx rather is equals to you bring n down to be the coefficient of x uh -huh. then you write x but the power is reduced by one like that that's what you do in order to differentiate you check what the power is you bring it in front of the variable x and then you decrease the power by one but if you differentiate a constant you get zero 
if you differentiate a constant you get zero take note of that okay so let's go on to this we have dy dx then the power is uh, 5 over 3 we're gonna bring it down and then multiply it to 5 over 2 so 5 over 2 times the power of x which is 5 over 3 then we shall have uh, 5 over 3 minus 1 then also here we have a half but we shall multiply it by the power which is 7 over 6 then we shall now subtract the power uh, and 1 so if we simplify this we're gonna have 25 over 6 x raised to power 2 over 3 is going to translate to um, is going to translate to 7 over 12 x raised to power 1 over 6 and now that is the simplified form for that differentiation we need to move further to question number four and question number four is dealing with um question here whereby we are told three three a tree was pla uh, planted exactly three years after it was planted the height of the tree was two meters exactly five years after it was planted the height of the tree was 2.4 meters given that the height h meter of the tree three years after it was planted can be modeled this is a model question by the equation h raised to power 3 pt squared plus q where p and q are constants um now find to three significant figures where necessary the value of p and the value of q the value of p and the value of q of course this is um, a question of modeling but uh, at the same time is going to use the concept of uh, indices is going to use the concept of uh, simultaneous equations so let us see what is expected of us so we are going to start this question by forming equations uh, two equations and that's those are going to be simultaneous equations and you will see that um, we are going to base our equation on uh, the number of years that we are told so we shall take t equals to 3 and then substitute 3 into the equation uh, so that we can be able to form uh, the first equation here so what we have done we are told when time is three years when time is three years uh, the height is two so because h represents height we are going to substitute h uh, 2 then we cube it T is equals to p uh, 3 squared plus q so we have the first equation then we are going to look also when um, t is 5 years then it means that uh, we are going also to substitute in the equation but the height is 2.4 so it will be 2.4 raised to power 3 is equals to p 5 raised to power 2 then plus q then we can be able to simplify this equation and it becomes this and then we can be able to call it equation number two then now we can be able to solve the two simultaneous equation by subtracting the second the first equation from the second equation and in that way we are trying to eliminate one of the variable which is q uh, which is going to translate to that and then now we can be able to solve for p divide by 16 both sides uh, which is going to translate to um, our p is going to translate to 0 0.364 then we can now substitute this value of p to n of the first equation that, uh, to n of the equation that was given here so that we can be in a position of finding what q is remember the equation was asking you to give your answer correct to three significant figures uh, remember to so do that our answer becomes 4.72 correct to three significant figures 
exactly two years after the tree was planted, its height was 5 meters. Now we are supposed to find the value of t according to the model. Give your answer to one decimal place. So we are going now to use the same expression. But uh, in our case, uh, we are given the height is 5. So we can be able to substitute and say the time is t, capital T. We can make t the subject of the formula, then we can now find the square root in that case. Because t was squared, we can be able to find the square root of that. And if you work it out, you get your answer, which is equivalent to 18.2 years, which is correct to one decimal place. For accuracy and earning all the marks, always remember to check in which accuracy am I told to give my answer. And that is a good practice of an A student. Right, so moving to question number five, we are given f of x equals to 2x minus 3 root x minus 5, where x is greater than 0. We are supposed to solve the equation f of x equals to f of x equals to 9. Now, what you need to understand is that uh, 2x minus 3 root x minus 5, that is a quadratic equation, is taking the form of a equation. So if we try to rearrange it and rewrite it, it can become a very beautiful, beautiful quadratic equation we can be able to solve. We have this equals to 0. And um, in that way, we can equate to 0 here. Now, we can let, uh, we can say, if we let yeah, we can let uh, u be equal to root x. u is equal to root x. I want to rewrite uh, this equation in terms of u. So if I let u equals to root x, you can see that u x can be equal to can be equal to u squared. So anywhere I have root x, I'm going to replace with u. But anywhere I have x, I'm going to um, I'm having x, I'm going to replace with that that with u squared. Then you can see now we come up with a quadratic equation which we can be able to. Now solving this quadratic equation using completing square method using a quadratic formula factorization, whichever method that you feel you can use, you're going to get your answers like that. But there's no way you are going to leave your answer like this because you are finding the value of x. So you are going to go back to the original part whereby you said, let u be what? Root x. So root x is equals to 7 over 2. Squaring both sides, you are going to get 49 over 4. But remember you are told x is greater than 0. So we are going to take that as our answer in that case 49 over 4. Solve the equation f of x. Solve the equation f double prime of x. So this is um the equation we were given but we are finding f double prime. f double prime means we are finding the derivative of the function f of x twice. We are going to find the derivative twice. So that will mean we differentiate f of x. Again, the answer we get, we differentiate it. Then we equate that to the answer we get, we are going to equate it to 6. So differentiating 2 raised to uh, 2x, that becomes 2. Differentiating 3x raised to power 1 over 2, it means we are going to have 3, 1 over 2x, 1 over 2 minus 1. But differentiating a constant, we're going to get zero. We mentioned that from the previous section. So that means we shall have the first derivative as that. And again, we're going to differentiate this to get the second derivative. So differentiating two, which is a constant, we shall get zero. And um, we shall be having negative uh, two over three times the power of x, which is negative one over two. Then x uh, negative one over two minus one. And that is going to reduce to this, right? Negative 3 over 2. Okay? 
then since we were told it should be equal to 6, so we shall equate that term uh, to 6, then times um, 6 uh, times 4 over 3 both sides, so that we can be able to solve for x. And of course, we're going to have uh, 8. Then we are going to raise, raise the power by 2 of negative 2 over 3. Negative, uh, okay. We are going to square both sides so that we can get rid of uh, this and then simplify it further. And um, we're going to have x raised to power negative 3 equals to 64. Finding finding the cube root. Okay, I can decide to multiply the power. I can decide in order to to remain with x. I can decide to multiply the power of both term, of both sides by neg uh, negative one over three, so that I can get rid of that negative three there. So that is going to translate to what? That's going to translate to x equals to sixty four raised to power negative one over three. And that means we shall have our final answer as um, our final answer being equivalent to our final answer translates to one over four. Moving to question number six. Question number six is um, the question from SADS. So you realize that um, SADS and indices are questions that we're going to be tested together. They, they go hand in hand. Yeah, so that's why we dedicated this video to SADS and indices. So we are supposed to show that root 180 minus root 80. Over root 5 is an integer find its value find the value of that integer we have been told so in order to find that huh? so I'd like you to look at this huh? we are going to rationalize the denominator and to rationalize the denominator when you have a single uh, a single uh, sad like this we're going to multiply by root 5 you don't change the sign in this case times root 5 you only change the sign when you have two terms when you are finding the conjugate. But to rationalize this denominator, we are going to multiply uh, the numerator and denominator by root 5. And that means that um, we shall have this becoming 900. This becomes 400. And down here, we shall have sad 5 times sad 5 or root 5 times root 5 is root 25. And root 25 is equivalent to 5. Subtracting 30 and 20, we are going to uh, and divide by 5, we are going to get uh, actually 10 over 5, which is equivalent to 2 integer that was. Simplify. 4 root 5 minus 5, 7 minus 3 root 5, giving your answer in the form a plus b root 5. So I'll have this question, try to attempt it. And check if you will get it right. So we can multiply by the conjugate of the denominator, and uh, you see we were having 7 minus 3 root 5, then the conjugate will be the opposite sign 7 plus 3 root 5. So having this, so we can be able to expand, and then we have 49 minus 45 here. I'm just trying to skip some step because I understand you know how to multiply sads, and uh, that's exactly what we're going to remain with is in the form a plus b root 5. In this case, a is 25 over 4, and our b is 13 over 4. All right, I'm going to access our different tutorials from p1, p2, p3, and p4. You will also be getting physics. Um, topics are discussed here so you have every reason to subscribe at the same way of showing support through this channel
let's move to the next question and that is uh, question number seven and question number seven is a question that involves integration and indices uh, because sometimes you'll be tested on how to integrate concepts like this but if you don't know how to work out with the indices it will be just uh, it will be very very yeah. difficult yeah. something that you that so that, uh, the first thing that you are whenever going to you are doing integration for instance if you are told to integrate um, x raised to power n we need to increase the power by one then the new power you have gotten n plus one you divide every time everything on that term by n plus one then you must end by saying plus c when you are doing integration so in this question that we are having here first we are going to expand open the bracket in the numerator and that is exactly what i've done at this point then divide each and every term that we are having here by 4x raised to power a half and that is going to simplify to this so the next thing to do integration is actually here we are going to it's like we are having one at this point so like we are having one at this point here so meaning if we increase this power by one it is going to become power two then now everything divide by two and that's going to translate to three over eight here is like we are having x raised to power zero that's why we don't have x here so meaning that if we add one it becomes x raised to power one which is exactly what we have you do everything at the same and you are going to get the value of um, that integration to be that so the most important thing that you don't have to forget is uh, that you have to add c when you are doing integration where you don't have the limits value of two companies a and b have been monitored over a 15 years period the share value pa of company a is uh, in millions of pounds and is modeled by this equation where t is the number after monitoring began the share value of p b of company b is in million of pounds is modeled by the equation p equals to negative 1.60 plus 44.2 where t is greater than or equal to zero where t is the number of years after monitoring um we are told the figure shows the graphs for both and then we are supposed to find the difference between the share value of company a and the share value of company p rather company b we're supposed to find the share value of company a and the share value of company b at the point at the point monitoring began so when we are seeing at the point where monitoring began it means we are trying to find those share values when t is equals to zero when t was zero what was their share value so that's when we can see now when monitoring began t is equals to zero so we are going to go for PA when T is zero, when T is equals to zero, when time was zero, we can be able to substitute it to the first model. And then we can now simplify that. And that's going to simplify to what? Let's just put that in the calculator. That becomes 37. This is 27.4, 27.4 million, 27.4 million. Then when t is equals to zero for the second model of b, we are going to substitute and we can see it becomes 44.2 million in that case. Say the maximum value of company A during the 15 years period. Maximum value. Here we can see it's uh, 53 because that was a decreasing model. So that's going to be 53 million uh, moving to part c find using algebra showing your workings in times during 15 years period when the share value of company a was greater than the share value of 
So here we are trying to find the equation PA is greater than PB. And then we are going to substitute now those models into uh, that inequality that I've created. Now you can see this is the equation that involves inequality, solution of inequalities. And then I can be able to expand the bracket. I pull the like terms together in that case. Simplifying the inequality, this is going to become what? t squared minus 20t plus 42 is greater than, uh, is less than zero. And the reasons why we are saying that uh, this is less than zero is because I've divided all true by the negative sign. When you divide all true by negative sign, the direction of the inequality is going to is going to change. So in that case, we are going to treat this as a, a quadratic equation. We solve the quadratic equation first so that we can be able to get the critical points. So I'll form a quadratic equation, then I'll solve this quadratic equation. Whichever method I can use, completing square method, I, or I can use a factorization, or I can use a quadratic formula, I'm going to get the value of t to be 10 minus root 58 or uh, 10 plus root 58. So, but um, something that you're gonna realize here is that uh, this is, yes, the inequality we have gotten. This is uh, the range of values of t. Um, but this model was restricted uh, to 15 years. So if you look at this, this is approximately 2.38. And this is approximately 17.6. But then you see 17.6 is more than 15. So we are not going to take this. So it will mean we are going to say our final answer will be what? Within the range of 15 years. So it will be greater than uh, 10 minus root 58, but less than or equal to 15 less than all equal to 15 because 17.6 was more than the, the, the number of years it, this uh, question is actually modeled. So that's why we have to ensure we are getting rid of 17.6, then we reduce it to equal or less than 15 years. Explain why the model of company A should not be used to predict the share value when t equals to 20. I remember this model was uh, only working with um, number of years up to 15 years. So we are going to say that uh, this one cannot work. Yeah, This model is known to hold or is known to work up to 15 years. So we can see 20 is greater than 15. So it cannot work. Uh, question number nine is a question to do with... Um, Yes, SADs, but SADs and also indices, but is a question that's uh, prominently dealing with, prominently dealing with, uh, thank you, is uh, prominently dealing with uh, cosine rule, cosine rule. We are told the figure shows the plan view of uh, a flower bed. The flower bed in the sh is in the shape of a triangle. A, B, C. We are told A, B is P meters, A, C is Q meters, B, C is 2 sad 2 meters, angle B, A, C is 60 degrees. Then we are, we are supposed, we are supposed, we are supposed to show that P squared plus Q squared minus P, Q equals to 8. So um, we are going to apply cosine rule here. And then we have to, for the lighter, we substitute the dimension with uh, P and Q and try to see exactly what we are going to get. Cosine rule A squared equals to B squared plus C squared minus 2BC cos A. Then our A in that case is um, 2 root 2, our B is Q and our C is P. Substituting everything, trying to simplify we're going to have 
our equation reducing to that. And then we can see p squared plus q squared minus p q is equals to 8. And that's exactly what we were supposed to show here. Given that AC is 2 meters longer than AB, use algebra to find the exact value of P and the exact value of Q. So we can now say let AB be X. We can let AB to be X. Then AC will be x plus 2 because we were told it was 2 2 meters longer then now we can be able to substitute into the equation we got in a so that we can be able to expand and then solve this we are going to have a quadratic equation that we are going to solve uh, okay solving this quadratic equation that we are having at this point we can see that um, our x is going to translate to two values. We are going to have um, negative 1 plus root 5 or negative 1 minus root 5. Now, you see, there is no way a dimension can be a negative value. The first answer that we have we are going to ignore this and then we shall say therefore our x is this so if our x is that what's that what's our q our q will be negative uh, 1 plus root 5 then plus 2 that's our q and our p is going to be negative 1 plus root 5 yeah in the next question that we have here we are going to work out the area of uh, the triangle exact area and remember we are going to use the formula area equals half a b a b sine theta a b rather a b are the two sides that are forming the angle theta in this case we are going to substitute uh, the two sides times sine 60 because the angle that was given was actually 60 degrees so working out this we are going to get our final answer root 3 m squared so if you simplify that that's exactly what we're going to what you're going to get <clears throat> and the question was asking us to give our answer in exact form exact form so we are going to leave it in sad form like that like that so having this question we're going to express each of the term as 2 raised to power x in that way we can be able to substitute to p yeah so once we have expressed each term to 2 raised to power x we can be able to replace 2 raised to power x by 2 by p which is uh the substitution that we were given in this case so we can say this is 2 raised to power 2 8 p equals to minus of course i've just brought 17 over 2 2 raised to power x on the other side of the equal sign so it becomes a minus and then plus 4 is equals to 0. Now since we are not having a fraction that in the form that you are supposed to show we can multiply each and every term by 2 so that we can get rid of that fraction that we have and meaning that the final answer now becomes exactly what we were supposed to show. And finally we are supposed to hence solve. So I've already told you before that um, if you are told to work out express in a given form, maybe they tell you now hence solve. When they are telling you hence solve, it means you are using uh, the part that you have in A to solve to continue in B. So meaning that uh, this expression that we are having in B here is the expression that we were having in the previous section and we showed that it can be expressed in the form 4p squared minus that 3p plus 8 equals to 0. So meaning we can be able to solve that equation in the place of this. Solving it, we can either use a completing square method 
whichever method that you can use uh ensure that you are solving the quadratic equation and then you're gonna eight, get eight to be equal to you're gonna get p equals to eight all p equals to one over four and uh, we can now go back to what p was p was equals to two raised to power x then we can now be able to solve for x x equals to three or x is going to be equal to negative 2.